अब मोहब्बत है इसलिए रहने दिया जिद होती तो बाहों में होती हिंदी सिनेमा जगत के दो चमकते सितारे अब उस आसमानी चादर में चमकेंगे वो दो सितारे जिन्होंने पर्दे पर मोहब्बत की हंसे रोए अब हमें उनकी जुदाई में ऊपर से सच में रोता देखेंगे सिनेमा का पर्दा सोना और सफेद छोड़कर हमसे हमेशा के लिए रुखसत हो गए महानायक ऋषि कपूर और इरफान खान पर जो लम्हे जो यादें जो अभिनय का छाप हमारे दिलों में छोड़कर आप दोनों गए हैं वो ना कभी मिटेगा और ना कभी धुंधला होगा आप दोनों की कला सिनेमा के आसमान पर सुनहरे सितारों से चमकेगा फीवर एफ रेडियो नशा और रेडियो वन की ओर से ऋषि कपूर और इरफान खान को हमारा सलाम हंड्रेड आर्स हंड्रेड स्टार्स आप दोनों के नाम हर इश्क का एक वक्त होता है वो हमारा वक्त नहीं था पर इसका ये मतलब नहीं कि वो इश्क नहीं था मुझे अपने इश्क पर पूरा यकीन था और जब इश्क के सामने खुदा जुड़ जाता है तो वक्त क्या है उसे तो बदल नहीं था Anevarukum vanakkam hi this is RJ Sanu from Fever FM Chennai and this is probably the biggest uh, digital activity on radio network Fever Radio 1 Radio Nasha and this is a tribute a salute to covid warriors and i have uh, <laughs> india's favorite politician if i can say so uh, an mp award winning author selling <laughs> author he's coffee <laughs> <laughs> Super selling cough these days. <laughs> and uh, you know the coolest politician with some swag. So, Vanakkam, Dr. Shashi Tharoor, how are you? Very good. Very nice to be with you, Sanjeev. Yes. So, you know what? I was expecting that you'd have grown your hair long because everybody's having trouble with a haircut, with a beard, you know, with a rock star look. I was thinking you'd be like that. Well, I, I was I was briefly tempted, but the problem was that there were uh, daily webinars, interviews, and everything else. I had no choice but to be respectable and shave every day. As for the hair, I got my domestic staff to have a crack at it, prepare kitchen scissors. So somehow, I think the real damage is not visible because it's behind my head. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give it a name. It's the kitchen cut. So congrats on your yeah kitchen cut it is kitchen share cut yeah <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Tarud how how are you coping with this you know what are the measures you're doing to keep yourself safe what's happening in your end Well actually uh, keeping myself safe has not been the problem because uh, we uh, are strictly observing the lockdown principles uh, I so happens my mother and sister uh, are locked down with me my mother was actually about to head back to her home in Kochi when some instinct made me stop her going and i was so relieved i did because when a week later the lockdown came i would have been out of my mind with worry if she'd been there <coughs> here at least i can keep an eye on her she's 83 and um, one always fears for uh, for the elderly at this particular time uh, my younger sister who lives in london was booked to go back but of course her flight and all flights were cancelled so she's also here which means there's a good nice family atmosphere at home but i've been kept very very busy as an mp by all the developments around the coronavirus even before the lockdown and during it because um, you know kerala is a role over the world and so many of my constituents and others have reached out to me we counted about 17 or 19 countries <laughs> from which they came to uh, uh, send messages whatsapp phone call saying get us back to india we can't bear it here there are some places they feel they're safe i have fishermen from my constituency believe it or not who are stuck in iran where they don't have decent uh, facilities and, and uh we have students in all sorts of places and then people who have gone out for business or temporary visas come back i've been in regular contact with the foreign minister and the civil aviation minister the limitations because of so many restrictions are removed 
But I have to say that each of these new calendars, at the beginning, and I still had my MP fund, I was trying to desperately order urgently needed desk kits, protective equipment, and all the essentials for healthcare workers, my constituents. Then, as you know, the government took away the MP, MP fund. But whatever I had spent to make spend, and all those 9,000 kits, uh, thousands of uh, and uh, 250 scanners have arrived and did distribute the healthcare workers still one of the forums. So that was a good feeling. Then we had migrant workers who were itching to go back to their states, Bihar, Bengal, Orissa. And I was asked to record a couple of messages to them in Hindi and Bengali, <coughs> which I did, urging them not to go. That was an unusual experience. Then there were a lot of human interest stories that came up. Uh, for example, one of the things that really sticks in my mind was I got an appeal from the mother of a tiny infant who had a rare kind of blood cancer, which for which the only cure was uh, an experiment in the Netherlands. But to decide whether she could get that treatment, they needed her blood sample to run some genetic test. And the blood sample was all set to go when the lockdown happened, all the flights were cancelled. So she appealed to me in desperation, saying the treatment has to be done before the girl's two years old. One, one second, Dr. Tarur, your voice is going in and out with the with the headset. I'll try again. Uh, shall I yes. just try better? Uh, from the uh, from the Norway, the child with the rare medical disorder. So, so um, the, the the mother appealed to me saying the flights are cancelled, but unfortunately the treatment has to be done before the child turns two years old, which is in June, two months away. Can you help? So I took up the challenge and I was able to persuade the foreign minister and the civil aviation minister. They were both wonderful, very helpful. We got the sample packed in dry ice, transported by road to Bombay, then by plate to the Netherlands, and the Indian embassy delivered it to the lab for the genetic test right at the time. So we're all hoping and praying the baby qualifies and is treated and cured. So these are the kind of human interest uh, stories that also come that don't make it to the headline. All of that kind of thing, plus a whole bunch of webinars, video conferences, speeches, book reading sessions, interviews. I can't tell you how busy I've been. The only difference in my schedule is that I'm not traveling and I'm not receiving visitors. But I'm doing just as much as I did before, in some ways even more than I used to because of all the demands. On top of that, I'm actually managing to exercise. I'm not sure I've lost any weight, but I've turned some of the weights I have into muscle. So that's been good. One and a half hours a day I'm at. And then I also managed to uh, do a bit of writing. I finished a book that Thor was finished before the lockdown, and I promptly started and it made good progress on another one. So at least the lockdown will help me keep up my, my book writing pace, which is important to me. Wow, that's that's a lot. I mean, I don't think 24 hours. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping at all? Not much, not much, but I'm getting a lot done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the truth is I never used to sleep much anyway because of the demands on my work. A normal day would keep me so tied up till 11 o'clock that all my writing and my emails and so on are done from 11 o'clock at night to 2 o'clock in the morning. Now at least I can sleep at midnight, so that's not too bad. <laughs> Congratulations. At least something you're able to do. Something I've achieved. So, uh, Dr. Thurur, you told me about your hectic schedule and I'm, you're saying that your schedule before and after was also very hectic. So, I went through your Twitter and social media where you're always like, you know, pretty active and I found some very interesting tweets. And one thing that you retweeted was, I know retweets are not endorsements, I get that. Uh, the one thing I read was about COVID yet. You know, there was a, there was this term that went totally viral. So, yeah, I wanted to ask you, any COVID hits you've come across recently? Plenty on social media, but I'm not coming across anyone in person. Uh, I'll tell you that uh, what one sees uh, when you see pictures of people gathering in large numbers, going shopping, going for joy rides, you really despair because, you know, honestly, many of them are young and irresponsible. And in all fairness, the young will almost certainly survive. I think it's a more than 99% survival rate for young people catching the virus. But they will easily infect others who could be less vulnerable. One hug to a favorite grandmother could be a death sentence for. 
So that's really comedian behavior. <laughs> Super. The second tweet that I uh, found very fascinating. Not all those who follow you are your fans. You have, yeah. you know, retweeted retweet, uh, retweeted that as well. So tell us more about this interesting following that you have. Well, listen. I mean, it's actually a truism that I've expressed before, but not with that particular illustration. The truth is, I know that um, many people delude themselves into thinking that because their number of followers is high, they're universally admired. The truth is, very often you're followed by people whose only aim in following you is to attack you, and they need to follow me so they can keep on top of my message. They're not fans or friends or followers in any other sense, other than the way stalkers are followed. After every woman knows that a stalker is also a follower, but that doesn't mean you welcome that follower. That's what I have also experienced. Super. Uh, one uh, one of the interesting thing is you've been giving English challenges in between all this. You gave a few English challenges on Twitter, and one particular word which I'm not able to spell is uh, flons. I'm sorry, I give up. Flons. Oxy nosy nihilification. What does that mean, Doctor Karun? It merely means the act of estimating something or someone as worthless. It's a silly word. I use it only in order to get attention for my book, The Paradoxical Prime Minister. Rather than merely announcing I'm releasing my book, I said my book, The Paradoxical Prime Minister, is more than just a 500-page exercise in fluxinosi nihilification. So of course everyone started looking that up. The worst thing is parents made their little four and five year olds learn that word, and then they would send little videos to me of the little kids saying it. And I thought, my God, what have I done? <laughs> so much pain and suffering on the innocent. <laughs> all right, Doctor Karuri, uh, thank you so much for sharing all that you have. So I just wanted to run this by you before, you know, asking. Um, so. I wanted to check with you if I can ask. A lot of people are facing a lot of problems, and you being an MP, I thought you could solve some issues of these people. Sure. So can I can I ask? Can I ask? Go ahead. All right. So he says yes. Okay, it's fun questions. Dear Doctor Tharoor, my name is Dinesh. My uncle lives in WhatsApp. Today he messaged me saying that Rasam cures Corona. Please tell me what should I do. <laughs> I, you can't switch off your uh, uncle's WhatsApp because that would be an act of cruelty. It's probably his principal means of entertainment as well. So what you should do is you should somehow send him a few more things that even he knows are absurd. You know, uh, if you send him something that says the moon is made of green cheese or that uh, uh, I don't know that. that, that that Italy was invented in Italy. I don't know. Say something that that he knows is not true, and then you see, see, Uncle, WhatsApp is not for education. WhatsApp is not reliable. Just use WhatsApp for fun, and just send him a few jokes, send him a few songs, send him a few amusing videos, and say that's all you should use WhatsApp for. Don't try and learn anything from it. Super. Here's another piece of advice that I want from you. When I come, sir, I'm a troll. I live on the internet. I love trolling people. When I see people, I just want to troll them. What is your advice for me? <laughs> My advice for you is get a life, <laughs> rather than trying to suck the blood out of other people's lives. It's what trolls do. Being a mosquito, the job of a troll is like a mosquito, just sucking the blood of someone else instead of actually living for yourself. So my only advice is go get a life. All right, few more, and we'll uh, you know come to an end for this. Hi, sir. Um, you know, uh, my name is uh, Karthik. They are telling me that 99% of the germs are killed. What about the 0.1, 0.0% of it? I have anxiety because of this. What would you like to tell me? No, I mean the fact is that it's it's probably true. So all you can do is take reasonable precautions. Really wash your hands with soap. Really do it for long enough that it can sing happy birthday twice. Make sure that you are yourself staying away from people as much as possible. Drink lots of hot water and lemon and honey. Drink rasam from Dinesh's uncle, and then uh, try and stay try and stay safe yourself. Everyone can only take reasonable precautions. No point being anxious as long as you're doing these basic things. You'll be fine. 
Super. Um, all right, sir. Um, here's the final one. Uh, sir, my name is Krishna, but I call myself Chris for the Western audience. Yes. I'm already wearing a mask within a mask. Uh, and it's, you know, wearing two masks is becoming very difficult for me. And the advice is what to do about the masks. So as long as the business process outsourcing continues and you'll be making phone calls to Western customers, you can be Chris there and Krishna at home. Or if you want to avoid one mask, you can tell all your family to call you Chris as well, as long as you have that job. That's one simple solution. You could also try and uh, try and anglicize the names of all your other friends. So um, you can make Kannan into Ken and you can make I don't know Sambandham into Sam. And then you'll find right, you're right at home because they're all just like you. Super stuff. See, this is what I really like about you. Any given point of time, anything, you just take it to a whole new level. Thank you so much, Dr. Tharoor. Thank it's you, really, Sanam. It's really been a pleasure, honor. I'm Shashi Tharoor and I'm delighted to be on 100 Hours, 100 Stars. Thank you. Thank With you. RJ Sanam. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Any parting, anything that you want to tell all those people who are watching you, you, you said share a lot, anything that you want to share. Look, we've had a light-hearted and jokey conversation, which is important once in a while, because there's so much grim news going around. But let's spare a thought for our incredibly brave healthcare workers who are sacrificing so much, taking so many risks, often without adequate protective equipment, to keep us safe. And let's do our part by keeping ourselves safe, distant, and healthy. So my final message is, stay home, Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay apart until all this is behind us. And on behalf of uh, all of us here, for the fabulous work that you're doing and the way you're putting yourself out there, the remarkable work that you're doing, we want to say thank you so very much. I know you're working non-stop, without sleep. Romba Nandri, sir, thank you so much. Romba Nandri to you, Rajesh Anu. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Okay. When I got to know that I will be speaking with you, I have been listening to that song and it's stuck in my head like I can't stop singing it. Ooh, baby, I love. So please forgive me if I just break into that song in the middle of the conversation as well because I can't get it out of my head. Your voice, you know, it's not the song, it's your voice. It is, you know, like when, when, my, when my team asked me, my gosh, uh, Big Mount, I was like, oh my gosh, your voice was the first thing that came to my mind. It is so, so different it is so iconic that voice is so my gosh you know that's 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 just like fantastic really i'm not joking so you should understand why am i fangirling right now because i was a kid when i heard that song and i can't believe that i was speaking with you like you know i never even dreamt of it you know i'm not joking i never even dreamt of it yeah so it's a big ah uh, well it, 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 it's it's beautiful to feel your energy thank you uh and i'm, I'm so happy that I was part of a moment of your life, you know, and that that song was special to you, that it meant something to you. You know, I, I, when that song and that whole thing came together, I was a young man, um, and it was like one of those moments in life where you understand that um, you have to give thanks for every little bit that comes into your life because you never know when you're really getting a gift in this life we have to live every moment and every day in this life like doors can open up and opportunities can come our way and that's the way i was living at that you know at that moment in my life and that that whole thing baby i love your way that whole opportunity it really was a gift that just kind of fell into our laps we were a bunch of little kids from uh california that wanted to play reggae music and that's all we knew. That's all we wanted to do. And then Baby I Love Your Way came around and changed our whole lives and everything just materializing wow. into a totally different way.
So, uh, well, uh, to everybody who is uh, watching this video, I'm sure you're getting goosebumps because I sure am. That is the front man, Kino, from the legendary reggae band Big Mountain. Oh my gosh, this is this is an exciting time. And the initiative, the program that we're doing right now is called 100 Hours, 100 Stars. We're bringing you stars from across so many fields, from movie makers to movie stars to music to music artists like Kino and of course the many wow. other. And this is going so to be nice fantastic. To be Thank you so much, Kino. So Kino, nice this is. Thank you so much. This is our initiative to raise maximum donations for PM Cares Fund, which is which has the main objective of, uh, you know, dealing with the crisis and distress events like uh, the COVID pandemic, which the world is struggling right now. So we would request the viewers to click on the link which will appear below on the screen or scan the QR code, and then when the once the window opens, they can. Uh, fill in their details and uh, they can uh, choose the amount they want to contribute and then click on proceed to make the payment because this is important because this is for all the people you know who are at the front line who are working tirelessly effortlessly you know wow. art you know, you know we are we are getting bored we have a crazy sleep cycle right now we don't know when to have coffee when not to have coffee but there are people who are you know in india alone we have 2.2 million uh, uh, medical healthcare workers and we have about 1.4 million uh, police personnel uncountable sanitation workers they're out there working and so many others the least we can do is you know make sure that we generate enough fund to help them so this is that initiative 100 hours 100 stars and i am so happy to have you you know this is this is amazing i i'm when you were here in india in 2017 you know uh, it was a big regret that i missed out but uh, well now i'm considering myself very lucky <laughs> Yes, and we're going to put together some sort of show, right? Um, I I was explaining to you that uh, I don't have a guitar, but that doesn't mean that we can't perform because I am an artist. And you never know what happens and what artists can do and what we're capable of doing, you know. But, uh, but a, it's a great pleasure to be here on your show, uh, Radio 1. Uh, last time, um, you know, I, I I went to India. I know that I went and interviewed with you guys and had such a great time. And really appreciate your support. You've been supporting Big Mountain. And so we're family. Um, during this time, uh, so important to get everybody on the same page, everybody understanding um, that this is a moment when we have to be thinking about each other. We have to think, be thinking about community. That's what reggae music is all about. That's what we always trying to push in reggae music. That is, you know, reggae musicians uh, uh, as a whole really look at life and this whole journey that we're on, on a spiritual level. And I think right now we're all getting a good dose of spiritual lessons, right? That's true. Uh, on all levels. Very true. And I'm so glad you spoke about reggae music because while growing up, for me, music was music. I couldn't differentiate between genres. And even right now, I'm very illiterate when it comes to music. So I just know, oh my gosh, I like this song. But I don't know how to define reggae. How would you define reggae, Kino? Well, reggae music is partly um, certain elements musically, um, sonically, and um, frequency-wise. Um, reggae music comes uh, initially from the island of Jamaica. It is something that the people of Jamaica invented, and it has a very important message. It has a very important spiritual message um, about liberation. It has a lot to do with uh, the Jamaican experience of being descendants from slaves, right? People that um, uh, had their whole lives taken from them and held in captivity for so, so long. Well, that whole experience um, manifested in this amazing music, reggae music, that today is spread all over the world and people all over the world. In India, um, I'm, I'm forgetting my brother uh, in, uh, in Delhi, but uh, the Raja, Raja Kings, um, you know, there's reggae music all over the world, in India, United States, every single country 
of the world has their special blend of reggae music. And it is the reggae music that thinks of positivity, that's trying to bring people together, trying to build bridges between people, find cultural, um, you know, uh, bridges that, that we can use to, to fuse this world together. And right now we're finding out with this whole experience that we're going through right now, how important it is for us to get uh, so much of our conflict resolved and find ways to work together because that's the only way that we're going to be able to deal with the challenges of the, uh, of the future, the challenges of right now and the challenges of the future. Well, reggae music, we're all about bringing people together, about making this world a one culture place, a place where we can all come together and appreciate being human, appreciate each other, our differences, our speciality. And I think Big Mountain fit right in because like you keep saying, Big Mountain is all about a leap in faith. And that is exactly a leap of faith. That is exactly what we need right now, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, it, we um, life is so weird right now. All we have is faith, you know what I mean? Where When you talk about um, faith and, and what what life is supposed to mean to us right now, you know what we're we're coming you know, to a second. moment in this time. You know, just for a second, my I got one of those. Oh. My dogs are going crazy. Just give me a second. Give me a second. Yeah, he knows it's weird. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I have two dogs, and uh, they go a little crazy sometimes. So yeah. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> that's okay. So, um, you, well, know, they, they, you know, we, we started talking about how life was weird, and they uh, they reciprocated, right? They yeah, were, they, they, they were right to... there. They understand. And uh, it, right, right now, it, it it it's time for us to be reinventing things and and <laughs> and uh, really yeah. looking at, uh, at 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 you know the, the sort of paradigms that we are living inside <laughs> of, because right now. We can reinvent our lives. We can reinvent the whole world. So, you know, how is life for you right now? You're in Mexico. How are you dealing with this whole quarantine situation? What are you doing? How are you staying busy? You know, I am uh, I am on a ranch in Baja, California with my girlfriend, Adriana. Um, we are, we've been, you know, taking care of, of ourselves and um we've been very careful to not infect anybody else we've been uh spending a lot of most yes. of the vast majority of our time very secluded um we you know we tried to when we saw that things were going to be uh getting serious um uh, we, we stocked up on food and we've been trying to find ways to just live life very simply you know taking everything down to the little, uh, you know, old minuscule level. And really, you know, I've been spending a lot of time just slowly but surely kind of getting into the meditation and trying to just see where it leads me, you know what I mean? Instead of saying, oh, well, I got all these things I want to do. I want to learn this software. I, I want to do this. I want to do that. Which kind of right off the bat, I was thinking, oh, gosh, you know, I'm going to have time to do things that I've yeah. been wanting to do for a long time, right? But yeah. Then you kind of just have to let the whole vibration, the whole experience lead you in certain directions, right? So I've been doing some weird things. I want um, to know those weird things. I'm so <laughs> glad you brought up the weird things on your own. I wanted to know them. <laughs> okay. I built a chicken coop. Um, I don't know if, you know, if you guys build chicken coops um, over there where you're from, but it's a chicken house. Of we have course. three chickens, we have a rooster, and we have two chickens. And we decided to do this. It's kind of like this whole experience that we've been sitting here going, okay, should we get chickens? Ah, yes, no, yes, no. But then the whole corona experience kind of just solidified you know, gave us a little bit of conviction. So we, we, we decided to go with it. So 
that was an interesting experience. Thank God you two are always there for that. But you know, you know the way you were saying there were many things that you planned to do, uh, like during this quarantine, things that you would catch up on. Was chicken coop one of those things that you always wanted to make? <laughs> you know, funny enough, yes, yes. Really? So I can, I can mark that off my list. Boom, chicken coop. <laughs> is this the weirdest thing, or there are more up your sleeves? Because we would like love to know what what more is happening at your end. Well. I really into fermentation. Like I like I like uh, I I make kombucha. I don't know if you've ever heard of kombucha. It's very popular it's a, on the internet. Yes. Oh, very good, right? So well, I have I have a little company here in uh, Ensenada where I live, and um, right now we're completely shut down. But over the course of the last two years, we've been growing and growing. We're like in about thirty thirty five stores here in my region. And it's something that I just love to do. I, I uh, I'm a health nut, you know. I I love to eat vegan. I love to, um, you know, just uh, be plant based. Um, somebody that's very uh, conscious of my environment, uh, recycling, and just, 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 you know, that that that's part of uh, who I am. Um, and 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 fermentation right now, it's like. I've got nothing to do but sit around and look at these bottles and watch them bubble. You know what I mean? It's like where they they could be cucumbers or, or, or beets or turnips or kombucha. You know what I mean? But it's like right now, man, I got time for fermenting. You know, I have to say this thing in those iconic words, baby. I love your way. Everything that you're doing. <laughs> oh, baby, I love your way. Every day, speaking of which, shadows grow so long before my eyes, and they're moving across the page. Oh, yeah, suddenly the day turns into night. Oh, far away from the city. Oh, yeah. But don't, oh no, no, hesitate, la di da, cause your love won't wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, baby, I love you way every day, yeah, yeah. I wanna tell you I love you way, I wanna tell you how I love you way. I want to be with you night and day, every night and day, yeah. Oh, baby, I love you way, every day. Oh, baby, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. All right. My gosh. Okay, you brought back so many memories. So many memories, Kino. My gosh. Suddenly, I'm back to 1994. My gosh. This is so, so good. Well, this is... Oh, man. That's great. Yes. So, and like, you... So, give me a, give me a scenario. You, uh, your parents uh, taking you to school in the morning or... Uh, I'm not waking up. Basically, the morning was always them like asking me, please wake up, please wake up. They would, you know, direct me, directly put me under the tap because I just wouldn't wake up. That was 1994 for me. Not kidding. And I would and come. Then you can hear, baby, I love your way. You under the water, freezing in the morning, <laughs> getting water yes. thrown in your face, and baby, I love your way is playing in the background. Oh, baby. <laughs> Yes, the way you don't wake up, we just love it. You know, oh baby, I love your way. Yeah, that was 1994 for me. And uh, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, of course, there's more going to happen. This is uh, 100 Hours, 100 Stars, our initiative, which is the biggest tribute to COVID fighters, the longest non-stop tribute to COVID fighters. And we are aiming to generate maximum donations for PM Cares Fund, which is basically a national dedicated fund to uh, which, uh, which aims at uh, creating... Uh, donations for you know uh, situations di of distress like COVID-19, something which the whole world is fighting right now. And we would want more and more people to click on the link below or scan the QR code and proceed and then fill in the details and uh, want to contribute. 
and then of course continue enjoying 100 hours 100 stars right now i have with me kino from big mountain my gosh kino what's with the name big mountain it's very different i mean like it cannot just suddenly come to you Okay, well, it's actually the name of a struggle. It was a political thing that was going on. We were uh, young kids uh, looking for a name. Um, we uh, came across the struggle of Native American people. They were fighting a mining company and the rights to live on their land. They were being relocated. And um, somehow or another, we ended up adopting their name. Uh, the name of their struggle was Big Mountain. And uh, it just felt right yeah and uh, which which iconic moment would you say brought big mountain to everybody's uh, you know to everybody's in everybody's radar everybody knew of big mountain was it baby i love your way or you thought it happened before that no it was baby i love you definitely baby i love you 1994 yes that was the tune that busted us wide open and i was touring the world and how was that? How was that feeling of touring the world, living out of a suitcase? You know, um, it, it has its ups and downs. Touring is, I mean, it sounds glamorous, but uh, it, uh, you're always going to find yourself in sticky situations. And, you know, I, 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 uh, it's, part, it's part of life as a musician. Um, you, you, you know, you, if you have the opportunity to tour, um, you take advantage of it and and you find yourself in vulnerable situations a lot of times. So it can be a double-edged sword, you know. Uh, what is promoters that? Promoters that don't pay. Give us an well, example. Promoters that don't promoters that don't buy hotel rooms, you know, things like that. It was like all of a sudden you're going, you're going okay, well, something happened. This guy, he was a real nice guy up until like yesterday and now he's not returning our phone call <laughs> <laughs> that happens even with people who are touring like big bands yeah. I don't know what happens with us you know when we go on trips and our uh, our vacation guy cancels on us I thought that happened just to us no it happened yeah no it happens to all of us everybody we all go through that it's like oh who Fred yeah Fred but he was so nice yesterday on the phone yeah He's never returned our phone calls? No. And we're at the hotel going, and they say there, there's no bookings. What do you mean there's no bookings? No, there's no hotels for us. Okay, we'll call Fred. I called Fred, but he, you know, he's not answering. It's like, you're going, oh, shit, fucking Fred, you know? And, you know, they, they have this to all of us. And, it, and, and uh, it, it, it's like, no matter what, you could say, you could be really careful, go through the contract, and go, okay, you got this, check. You got that, check. You got that, check. You know, that you end up running into those Freds. I, I shouldn't say Fred. Fred's a nice name. But I now, just came up oh, with that, right? I thought we were all looking for a Fred now, but all right, there you clear it up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's life on the road, you know. And uh, but But you get to meet a lot of interesting people. Um, you know, it can displace you, though. You know, it's like home takes on a whole different meaning. Um, home, where, what, what is home? Now let's get philosophical for a second. What is home? Well, to a touring musician, home sometimes can be, you know, a, 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 a hard thing to define. Yeah. Yes, of course. Sometimes you're home with your music. Sometimes you're home with family. Sometimes you're home in a hotel. With a yeah. dog. Oh, yes. Mine are, my home is always with my dogs. Yes, that's true. He looks like, a, he looks like he's like a little golden retriever. What, what, what I do. I do. Uh, that's Muffin, a golden retriever and a poodle. His name is Kiki. Kiki is sleeping behind me and that's Muffin. Yes, a golden one. Yeah, yeah, your mom is the golden, yeah. Nice. <laughs> oh, Muffin is so lucky he's going to get a shout out from you. He has no idea. Muffin. Good Muffin, God. Muffin, yes. Well, oh, you my know, gosh. Is, uh, oh, all right, baby. Easier. Have you ever heard of the term ragamuffin? No, I haven't. What is it? 
that's a big that's a big term in ragged culture. Ragamuffin. God, I hope I'm defining it correctly. I mean, you know, ragamuffin is like a, sort of a, a a little bit of a lackadaisical, relaxed approach to life. Right? Uh -huh. Ragamuffin, somebody who's who's uh, ragamuffin is somebody who who is not you know might not have everything in order might have the clothes a little you know bit i did place, not maybe. that i was a ragamuffin all my life thank you so much yes i am ragamuffin she's a ragamuffin ragamuffin today whoa ragamuffin she's a ragamuffin yeah all right is that a song she's for me is that a song for me thank you so much there's a song there's a lot there's a lot of reggae songs yes so. Now that we were talking about 1994, uh, when the song became a big hit, Baby I Love You, uh, there were some big movies that had come out in 1994 and I want to give you a very loose description and I want to see if you get them right. Oh God. Are you uh, ready for it? You're going to put me on the spot. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Let's see. <laughs> All right. So the first one. Okay, so there was this simple boy who was very determined and he walked and he ran and he made a lot of friends and uh, the box of chocolate became very popular because of this movie. That was 1994? Yes, that was 1994. No way, really? Okay, Forrest Gump. Yes, Forrest Gump is correct. All right. Okay, so I feel better now. Okay. All right, bring it on, bring it on, I'm ready. All right, second one is, okay, so there was this boy who was supposed to become the king just like his father, but uh, his uncle kills his father. And then there are struggles, and then, you know, he finds love, and by the way, all this is happening in a jungle. That was also 1994. Oh, God, I should know this. I should know everything about jungles. I'm a very jungle-oriented person. <laughs> really? Think uh, about it. It's happening in jungle. A boy who's supposed to become a king of a pride. Let's put it that way. And his uncle, okay. who was called Scar, killed his father. Oh, shit. <laughs> yes. Ding, ding, ding. Hakuna Matata. Yeah. Hakuna Matata. Yes. Hakuna Matata. Yeah, okay. Lion King. Lion King, yes, I know it came in 2020 oh, now, okay. but 1994 was the year when it came out. Good one, right? Well, we make we make good partners. We make good partners. We should go on Jeopardy together. Yes, we should. Oh my gosh. Do, do they, they, they allow no. partners on Jeopardy? I would love to go on Jeopardy with you. Let's play. I have one more movie for you. Uh, so, okay, Charlie Ipkiss worked in a bank. He had a boring life, and then he found this magical whale and then he turns supernatural and he's funky and ooga. what movie was that and there was a policeman who would have donuts he had a dog a, a JRT yeah Jack Russell Terrier Stanley a Jack Russell Frank. boring life Cameron Diaz okay, this movie Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Cameron Diaz, gosh darn it. Which one is it? It's not the one where she gets the gel in her hair. No, it's not that one. All right. Because you are that's, on that's actually the same director. That's the same director as Reality Bites, so that would have been later on. Yes, that's later one. And uh, now you're on a timer. So timer starts now. Tick, tick, one. Tick, okay, tick, no, no, okay. I, I can't remember. I can't remember. It's what the it mask. The mask, Jim Carrey. He puts on a mask. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Nine. Yeah, I'm not into superhero. Oh, he was not a superhero. He was more of a... God well, him. he was kind of a superhero. He had a mask. Yeah, he had a mask. That's true. Okay, now I have to tell you, like, you know, growing up in 90s, I think it was a magical time. I love and I miss 90s so much. So tell me, if somebody had to, if someone had a crush on someone, how would they tell that person that they have a crush on them in 90s? 
how would they do that in 90s would they ask them like do you like me say yes or no circle or of well, course yeah i mean it, i really like her without that would have been something that um you said in in junior high school that same generation but like i'm totally into you you know i'm oh. totally into you so that's the sentence that he used now we know what kino said when he was in high school junior high yeah 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 that was that, that that's what i would say that's what Did i would say did you ever make a mixtape for someone what was that a mixtape did you ever make a mixtape for someone um yeah i made a mixtape i made a couple mixtapes in my life yeah are you getting nostalgic right now um well yeah yeah now you know you're 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 taking me down memory lane yeah it's a good <laughs> one right that lane <laughs> yes no it's a good one yeah i'm going back to like 6th 7th grade you know 8th grade that was uh that was some good time cassette tapes you guys have no idea what cassette tapes were all about man cassette tapes were that was a miracle of of god yes and remember please be kind please rewind be kind please rewind <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. and, and talking about 6th 7th grade i mean i was reading up on you you grew up in a house of parties your parents were famous for throwing really famous parties one day ah oh god it's funny what information floats around the internet but i uh, yeah my parents threw great parties i'm not a, much of a party uh thrower but yeah my parents have always had legendary parties mariachis and bands and just great music and food and and drink you are not into parties kino you are the voice of the well party. yeah well you know i mean i I'll, I'll, i have a, i have parties here and there but it's just you know It, it's not easy to throw a good party it takes somebody that really likes to do it and knows how to do it that's true that's very true for me i can throw a party but i can forget that it's me who's thrown the party i can have the fun and leave at the end as well so that's the only difficult part for me like i have to remember that i have to stay back and that's clean up that. i forget that that's bit that's the best part yeah <laughs> all right you know now we're talking about the past but what is in future what's in pipeline for big mountain project what's happening You know, I think right now, um, Big Mountain is kind of in cruise control. We've been, uh, we we've had like an idle time. Then we came back. We were like really active the last five years, doing a lot of touring. Um, I think that we're kind of reaching a plateau in a sense um, that is going to. you know kind of like just fused together sort of the experience of the, what the whole world is going through right now uh the music industry has been so weird in the last 10 years and i think the music industry now is finally sort of reached where it is going to it's going to be the same way for like a few years now which you really couldn't say that Five years ago, you really couldn't say, "Okay, the music industry is going to be this for the next five years, right?" It's for yeah. the last twenty years, you couldn't really say that. So right now, it feels like we finally hit a place where we can all kind of be creative and have fun and see what happens. See, you know, there's there's so much diversity. People are. it getting into their own niches everybody's going into their own little camp and that's fine you know let everybody go into the little rabbit hole uh with music reggae music is always going to have festivals all over the world and one of those festivals is going to need big mountain so we'll fly over there and we'll do our thing and um you know hopefully um we get in a situation where we, where we can do some recording we haven't recorded as a band in a while all of our recordings have kind of been uh he's over there he's over there he's over there he's over there we haven't recorded 
in the same place, like in the same house, where the way we used to back in the day, you know, back in the day we would rent a house for a month and we'd all go in there and try not to kill each other. And, uh, <laughs> Kino, Kino, what song? What song is always on your mind? If there's one song which is yours or somebody else's, what is that one song that you often find yourself humming? And can you sing that one for us? Oh my God. Well, you know, Baby I Love Your Way has become synonymous with my life, whether I like it or not. I can't, I can't escape it, right? It just, and send my kids to college. Um, you know, it, it's kind of been one of these things that uh, I've had a, sometimes it's been a little frustrating trying to get beyond the shadow of Baby I Love Your Way. It was such a huge hit and has had such a strong uh, resurgence throughout the year. So, you know, a certain part of my life revolves around that too. Um, people ask me to sing that song all week, all day. You know, can you sing "Baby I Love You" way to my mom? She's having a birthday. Well, how am I going to say no, right? For me to take a video and say, "Hey, this is for Alicia. Happy birthday!" Ooh, baby, I love your way. It takes fifteen seconds. Wow, I do it, right? Somebody, if, if it comes across my desk, I'll just do it. Okay, cool. Hey. Ooh, you know. Um, so it's around all the time. That's true. I can't escape it. Okay, you're talking about wishing people. And if I, if I have to, now let me ask you. Uh, it's not a wish, but if I have to impress somebody in Mexican, how do I do that? I just know, hola, que tal? Beyond that, I don't know anything. <laughs> How do I impress? What is that one sentence which will absolutely impress a Mexican person or a Spanish-speaking person? I can just do um, that. I guess you would have to say, um, Orale, way. Orale, way? What does that mean? Way. 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 Orale, way. Orale, way like like uh, like ooh baby I love your way. Ooh, orale way. Orale way. What does it mean? <clears throat> um, way means like hey dude, like homie, friend. Uh, it's a it's a gesture, a uh, 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 camaraderie, right? Uh huh. Like, orale may means. Um, it's a positive gesture, meaning let's do it, you know, we can, we can do this, orale, orale, it's, it's a way to just kind of rally the troops, so orale way. Kino, can you imagine if I ever meet a Mexican person and I say orale way, and then I tell them, you know who taught me that? Kino taught me orale way. My gosh, that'll be enough to floor that person. Right. And you said it, and you said it perfect right now. Thank you. I'm or a good perfect. teacher. I'm a good, I feel, I feel, I feel good about my teaching capabilities. Yes, You're you are. You're a good student. Thank you. Thank you. I have to ask you one thing. How do I flaunt it to people in Mexican that I'm good friends with the Kino McWheely? <laughs> uh, this is easy because see, Mexicans, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, words that, that cross over, right? So you uh -huh. can say, Kino, ask me brother, like brother. But I think of saying it with a Spanish accent, brother. Kino, oh. ask me brother. Kino, ask me brother. Uh -huh. He's, Kino is my brother. All right, Kino es mi brother, orale ve. Like it's like saying, he's my friend, he's my homie. I'm nice. running with him. Nice, nice. I'm very, very if, happy. If, 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 if you ever come to Mexico, you have a house here and you're going to be running with me. 
Thank you so much. Now I have some video, Kino. You cannot take it back. <laughs> I'm going to take care of you. Because you know what? I know you can eat chile. I know you can eat spicy food. <laughs> Oh, I, I will try. I will try not to disappoint you there. Definitely not. Kino, tell me, what is the first thing you will do when the lo this whole quarantine situation is over, when the lockdown is over? You know, um, wow, that's a great question. I mean, I think, I think I would, I, you know, I, I, I'm still just praying that my family is okay and that my children are fine and that, they, and that they're processing this whole thing correctly. You know, I, um, I feel bad that, that we've turned this world into what it is and that the young people are here to experience this and, and it's affecting their lives and expecting their experience of life. You know, so I think a lot of, a lot of my hope and dream about what's in the future goes back to the young people. These young people, it's the young people that we need and we need to energize. We need to, you know, give them value and give them worth. Young people, education. I mean, I think it's, it's like it's kind of going back to the future, going back to what is our future? Our youth. We need to, we need to focus on education on taking care of young people from education all the way to health everything it, it should be focused on them yes that's true education is the way ahead and in fact all those people all all the medical healthcare workers who are helping right now well they have done their bit of education and they're saving uh, saving the day actually they're saving mm -hmm. all of them. so absolutely education is the way ahead and absolutely uh, Kino, now, thank you so much for giving me, really, your precious time. Thank you so much. Now, before you leave, I want you to sing one last song, which is absolutely my favorite. I love Touch My Light. I love oh Touch My, my Light. Really? Thank yes. you for loving that song. I really like it very much. I love the way it goes, la di da di da in the beginning. I love that song. <laughs> I'm going through, see, you're, you, you told me about the intro, now I'm going through the intro. Uh, sometimes it's so hard to see, yeah, the things that we dread so much come apart so easily. And in my distress, I often pray. Oh, yeah. Would that I please when when things start to come our way? Oh, you know that better days will come. Seems like it's been so long. We seem to forget so easily. Love needs a share of energy, yeah. Come on closer to me, girl, touch my light. Oh, yeah. Come on closer to me, girl, touch my light. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah, ba, 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 ba. La, di, da, di, da. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know that better days will come. Seems like it's been so long, we seem to forget so easily. Love needs a share of energy. I feel so safe in saying, in the end, our love will shine. These quarrels that we're having now could only strengthen us in time. Come on closer to me, girl. Yeah, don't you see? That anything is possible, long as we believe, yes. Come on closer to me, girl, touch my light, oh baby. Come on closer to me, girl, touch my light, oh yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Muchas gracias, muchas gracias. Thank you so much. De nada, mi amor.
Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Thank you for this conversation. This has been wonderful. Thank you, thank you. It has been wonderful for me. Thank you so much for coming on 100 Hours, 100 Stars on Radio 1. It has been absolutely a gorgeous luck for me to talk to you and for listening to you live. Thank you so much.